that's what Edward Snowden has revealed. All this sort of information. And it's important. So, uh, I do want to talk about uh, some of the, the differences between Assange and Snowden. I, I, this is not like a competition of who's, who's got it worse or anything of that sort. This is more of just sort of a, uh, a look at, at, the, at the difference in situation. Because in these interviews that uh, uh, Snowden is giving, he is very um, poised and, uh, you know, he talks about his paranoias and his concerns and his fears and things of that sort. Um, and he's very open about them. Um, but uh, Assange, uh, Assange, not that Assange wasn't, I think Assange was also uh, pretty, uh, pretty on point with that sort of stuff. But I, I think Assange had a lot more... Um, lot more stuff to worry about there uh, you know um i think he had he had faced some uh heavy mental health issues um uh, and that were a lot more difficult for him to fight because of the environment that he was in um and that can that can have a lot of impact on uh on mental health and 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 uh, and, and you pushing through um some certain certain negative mental health aspects uh, you know so uh, I think the biggest thing between Assange and Edward Snowden is that Assange, for seven years, was trapped in the embassy in UK. Basically, uh, uh, the Brits said that if he steps out of the uh, uh, if he steps out of the uh, uh, embassy, the Ecuadorian embassy that he was in, he would get arrested and then extradited for sure. Uh, and Assange didn't want that. He didn't want to get extradited and uh, face trials against the Espionage Act, which is also the same thing that Edward Snowden is, is, um, uh, would face trials on, is under the Espionage Act, uh, which is an outdated law. I will keep saying this over and over again. It is an outdated law. It has uh, no bearing in today's society at all. Um, and it is completely ridiculous, and it, uh, it does more harm than good. Uh, I've done a whole uh, video about it, uh, connecting it back to the, uh, the uh, ejection of Assange from the Ecuadorian embassy, um, if you want to go into the backlogs and, and kind of check that out. Um, but um, yeah, Assange was kind of locked in that embassy. He wasn't allowed to go out. Uh, I, this is a Western nation. A Western nation basically uh, said, y y you step out, we'll arrest you. So they kind of forced him into um, in, into this very um, difficult and uh, uh, negative situation, you know, much like they did with Snowden. Um, the United States canceled Snowden's passport and put him in a very difficult situation. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, uh, I think the reason why they did that is to... to uh, to, to be like, oh, see, he's allied with Russia. It's the same thing they did with fucking Assange because he revealed uh, that the DNC was going to try to use anti-Semitic tactics against Bernie Sanders to make Hillary Clinton look good. Uh, and, and they were like, oh, he's, oh, he's right. He's, that's probably Russian. It's probably Russian. No, I think the DNC is just corrupt and uh, a piece of shit organization that should not be controlling uh, any aspect of our election. Uh, what they're doing is wrong, and they should uh, they should not be in power to control the election the way that they do. Uh, so Assange, uh, for seven years, can't leave this embassy, right? <laughs> kind of trapped indoors. Uh, Snowden, on the other hand, um, can move around Moscow. You know, he goes to the grocery store, museums, things like that. He's not. Uh, he's got permanent residency that uh, gets renewed every three years or, or is up for renewal every three years in Russia. Uh, he applied for it. He makes his own money. He doesn't take any money from the Russian state. Uh, and, uh, you know, he gets, to, he gets to move around. That's huge. Being, being able to do that, uh, in these interviews, he still talks about how he's free. Um, and I think that's a big deal. And, and I think that... Uh, probably helped pull him out of the darkness of the situation a, a little bit easier when you when you kind of have um, the ability 
to move and to see things and to experience the world, uh, it's, it's a lot easier to come out of uh, negative mental health spirals. And again, in the interviews, he's talked about uh, the states of paranoia that he would be in. Uh, he wouldn't leave his apartment without shaving his beard. He wouldn't, um, he would wear a hat. He would wear a scarf over his face so that people wouldn't, you know, like just in case anybody recognized him. And, um, so coming out of that was, I, I think, because of the environment that he was in, um, helped pull him out of, the, uh, out, out of that uh, paranoid state of mind. Uh, that could have been uh, pretty harmful to him. Um, and unfortunately for Assange, he didn't have that freedom. He didn't have that, uh, he didn't have that basic right. They took his basic right away, and that had negative consequences on his mental and physical health. Um, his eyesight was, was going. Uh, I, I talked about uh, that in a previous video as well, in depth. You know, so if you want to take a look at that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, because of that, uh, you know, his, his health is in jeopardy. And uh, Assange was arrested on false charges. They put him in a supermax prison and uh, put him in Belmarsh for skipping bail. That's what they put him in prison for, skipping bail. That's, that's what they put him into a... a uh, a maximum security prison for. And then they want to extradite him and put him into a supermax prison in, in the United States. Admax, I think, is where they want to put him when they extradite him. 175-year charge for revealing the truth about American and corporate war crimes, um, uh, corporate fraud, uh, uh, DNC fraud, election fraud, uh, and he's revealed, uh, you know, things about not just the United States, but uh, all over the world, including Russia. So uh, TPP, they were one of the first people to reveal what's going on with the TPP, and that's a global effort. That was a global effort. A lot of Western countries were involved in that, and that would have basically fucked over the working class. And this guy got arrested for on false charges because, uh, because he got targeted because he revealed this sort of information. And uh, uh, that's uh, not okay. Edward Snowden, once again, like we talked about, uh, says that he's free uh, because he does have the ability to, to move around and um, take care of himself uh, in that regard. And he's currently in negotiation because uh, people have come up and said, uh, well, why don't you, um, why don't, like, would you face trial in the United States? And he said, yes. But I have to be able to tell a jury uh, of my peers, of people from the United States, that of, of why I did what I did, why it was important to me uh, to do what I did. And the United States government's like, no, we're not going to do that. Probably because when people hear uh, why he did what he did, they will go, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense. I don't want to be spot on. I want to, I just want to masturbate in peace. That's what I want to do, right? Like, that's, you need privacy in your life. You need, you need moments to yourself. Um, you know, I cherish my moments in my car alone. I really do. I value it. Um, sometimes it gets a little lonely, but, but I value my time to be a little introspective to think about, um, you know, uh, the past week or the past day, the show from the night before, uh, you know, something that I read, um, you know, personal issues. I cherish that time. I, I, it gives me an opportunity to think about myself, think about the world around me, um, and run through some things and clear things up in my own head. I think that's important. Everybody should take this time to, to be introspective. Uh, but in a society that uh, that doesn't really care about people's mental health, eh, who gives a shit? And that's exactly what, what one of the reasons why the United States government won't uh, let Edward Snowden talk about why he did what he did, why um, 
this is uh, a violation of the Fourth Amendment and why Dick Cheney was basically saying, yeah, it, sure, it might be a violation of the Fourth Amendment, but it's fine. Legally, we're in our right to do it. Um, so, you know, Snowden's in negotiation with, uh, with what to do. He's not in prison. Um, recently, there was a couple articles that talked about uh, how Assange is mumbling and, and not you know, able to form sentences, his, his mind's not all there, and, and it's because the, he's been put through psychological torture. He's been put through psychological torture by being in an embassy, not being able to have basic human rights for seven years, and then he gets put, put into prison, he's a political prisoner, for, for doing nothing, for really what he did, revealing the crimes of the elites, that's what he did. But they got him on skipping bail of a crime that they can't, uh, there are too many weird, bizarre details that Sweden was like, yeah, we can, I don't, we don't think we can do anything about this. Things are not adding up. Things are, things are weird and wonky and we don't feel comfortable, you know, having a long drawn out trial and possible extradition. Like we don't want to deal with it. Big thing, uh, I think the distinction that we should also make is um, Julian Assange is a publisher. Julian Assange is a publisher. WikiLeaks is, is, a, is a publication that, that has a 100% hit rate. They've never had to retract a story ever. Um, and uh, Edward Snowden is not a publisher. He was a contractor. He was an inside man. Um, not, not like an inside man like he was sent inside the NSA. No, he was... He was a, an, an intelligence agency insider that knew what was going on um, and had an ethical and moral obligation to say that uh, what the intelligence community was doing was not right and, uh, and turned it over to publishers and journalists. Julian Assange being in prison means that uh, you know they can, they can start arresting other journalists if they want to because they've, they've, they've said things that they don't uh, that the State Department and the intelligence community don't like. Slippery slope. Using that Espionage Act. Slippery slope. Using an outdated law that sh- that that is controversial and uh, and has no basis in our current society. Pushes the idea of paranoia. Pushes this Hollywood uh, fantasized divide of spies and all this other shit. Slippery slope. What this really all boils down to is uh, uh, an intelligence war, right? Uh, as I'm listening to a lot of the stuff um, that that Snowden is talking about and everything with uh, with Assange that happened, um, what I'm really noticing is that this is a war about intelligence. This is a war about information. Is what it boils down to. Uh, they are mad at these people, the intelligence community, the State Department, um, the governments, uh, that they've revealed information that uh, that they never wanted revealed. They wanted to do things behind closed doors. They wanted to do things in the shadows um, that violated our rights, that, the rights of the people, that, uh, that uh, falsely put us in situations that we should have never been involved in in the first place, uh, that proved that... Um, you know, uh, fraud is being rewarded by wealth. That these people are liars. And that's intelligence and information. It's intelligence and information. And uh, one of the aspects of this war is that they don't want the American people to know this sort of stuff. They don't want the American people to know what kind of deceitful things they're doing, you know, how, how they're operating within the shadows. So anybody that has that information, they will wage war on them. They're, I mean, they're literally they're putting an economic sanction on an individual right now by, by suppressing Edward Snowden's book. So, and, and then there's other countries involved as well, right? Uh, I think the Cold War 
is in a new phase. I don't think we ever really ended the Cold War in any way. We're to, it's it's become this, in, you know, it's it's a carryover of the intelligence war. It's about what we can learn about these other countries, get in front of them, and then disrupt what they're doing. Um, meddle in their elections and uh, at, you know so on and so forth and that's been going on between a lot of different countries right like Russia Russia and the United States meddle in so many different countries elections so many different countries politics um, uh, and it's ridiculous it's ridiculous and it's all a buy for power and information they're using information to buy for power um, and uh, look I think information should be shared it should be shared around we should learn the truth we should uh, have knowledge about what's going on and that's for everybody to be shared so that everybody can have the power of that information uh, not just a privy few uh, and and again you know that's what this war is about it's about leveraging information for power and who gets to leverage that information for for what kind of power Edward Snowden Julian Assange Daniel Everett Hale Daniel Ellsberg Chelsea Manning um, reality winner I know I'm probably missing a few Bill Benny uh, if I'm missing any other whistleblowers leave a comment below um, and uh, you know let me know about some more whistleblowers I should look at Christopher Wiley was the uh, Cambridge Analytica whistleblower I think that one just came to mind uh, but these are people that should be revered they should be revered for revealing who is the, the culprit on this intelligence war? Who is the culprit on, uh, on controlling um, information, on controlling knowledge uh, as a way to manipulate and, uh, and, and, and shift the, the course of power instead of giving power to everybody so that we can all uh, have some kind of voice and some kind of, um, you know, strength in what we're, strength in, in, in uh, building a society that is just and equal and works for everybody so um, yeah we should be we should be celebrating these people not putting economic sanctions on them not exiling them not putting them in prison not calling them criminals and traitors hey thanks for watching this video uh, this is part of a little series I do called road reflections where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment current news stories uh, debates that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast taboo table talk or forkful of noodles it's a little bit looser and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash haha. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road. If you enjoyed the content of this video, there is a very good chance that you probably will enjoy my live stand-up comedy. I'm going to be touring all across the country, so if you are in Atlanta, Charlotte, North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, Augusta, Georgia, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Champaign, Illinois, Bloomington, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Minnesota, I will be coming to your city very soon. You can go get your tickets to come see my live stand-up comedy over at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. I hope to see you guys there. Thanks for checking out the video, and we'll see you on the road.